The greatest ministry I have on earth is to my children. That's the greatest ministry. If I fail there, I can't do it here. If I fail there, it's no good here. And so I just praise God that uh, he's, amen, he's, he's helped me be a better father, a better husband, and in so many ways, just such a better man. And I just praise God for that. But one of the things I have found out is my children need my time. And I never understood how powerful that was until the Lord began to minister that to me of children needing their father's time. So, Father, we come before you right now. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this season. We know that Jesus is the reason for this season, but we know Jesus is the reason for every season. And Father, right now, I just give you praise, honor, and glory that, God, you came in the flesh, Emmanuel, dwelt with man, and brought the redemption of heaven planned from before the foundation of the world. Oh, God, I thank you that you're a master planner. And then you performed it. We give you praise, honor, and glory for Christmas is truly the announcement of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. If you agree, say amen. amen. One of the things that I realize as I get older, do you remember when you were younger and you went around and everybody said, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And that was just standard, that was just standard conversation. And nowadays, it's happy holidays and all that stuff, and do you realize little by little by little they're trying to take Christ out of Christmas? Do you realize there is more emphasis on taking Christ out of Christmas than there is about taking Christ out of the resurrection? We don't have nearly the fight over the resurrection of Jesus Christ as we're having with the fight of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and us celebrating Christmas or the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you say Merry Christmas, people look at you like, like, you're, like you're crazy or look at you funny. But I just shock people. I just go up to them and I say, Merry Christmas to you. Yes. Yes. That's right. And I kind of know where they are with the Lord when I say that to them. <laughs> so if I run up to you and say, say Merry Christmas, understand. I, it just, I just want to know you're at with the Lord, okay? So we have some reading today that, that I want to talk about, and why Christmas is being attacked so. There's a reason Christmas is being attacked in the earth. There's a reason that the enemy wants to destroy Christmas, take Christmas out of the lexicon, because brothers and sisters, this is the thing that God promised, and then they performed that changed history. That's right. The reality is, do you know Jesus Christ is not the only person to be resurrected? Do you realize that? Jesus raised Jairus' daughter. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. In fact, in the Bible, there are ten known resurrections that are recorded in the Scripture. If you talk to missionaries all over the world, they will tell you about resurrection. Do you know that when Jesus Christ rose from the grave, the Bible says many saints of God got up out of the graves and they went into the city of Jerusalem? Can you imagine that? I, I, I think one of them was Abraham. I think I, They went into the city of Jerusalem and saw the Word of God preformed. They saw that. But there's only been one virgin birth. That's right. There's only been one virgin birth, brothers and sisters. Amen. You all got here, not by the stork. There's only been one virgin birth. That's right. Hallelujah. And so, God, do we have that ready for today? Because God... Okay, you guys need to quit playing with your games back there and get with it here. Okay? <laughs> okay? If they don't have it, I'll just get it out of the Word myself. But I want to talk about Isaiah 7.14 while they're getting that. Do you know Isaiah 7.14 is one of the scriptures that God has used to bring many Jewish people to himself in the last days? Because many Jewish people will tell you, oh, we believe in the Old Testament and we love our prophets. But they don't know what the prophets wrote. And then one day Isaiah was writing by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I can just imagine in that process of him taking dictation... And therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Amen. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Whoop, time out. What, what did you just say, Lord? Isaiah 7, 14. This has brought many Jewish people because they will talk about Isaiah and how much they revere Isaiah. And then they read the words of their prophet Isaiah. And he reads and he scrolls this. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And it's very important. Not a child, a son. Very, very important that the Word of God made this prophetically. She shall bear a son, call his name Emmanuel. Our God is a genius in relation to performing his work. That's right. That's How are we doing, guys? We got that up yet? 
Almost, okay. So I'll have to put some filler in here. <laughs> What's amazing to me is, is when, when the angel Gabriel comes to Mary. Hail, thou art, thou art hardly, highly favored among women. And God says, you're going to bear a son. Not a child, a son. God is very specific in what he's talking about in relation to your redemption and my redemption. So let's look at Luke 1, 30 through 35. And in this prophecy, God mirrors exactly what he told the prophet Isaiah. A son is coming. Say with me, a son is coming. A son is coming. And the angel said unto Mary, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. And I want to stop right there. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Not in thy heart, not in thy mind, not in your spirit. Say with me, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Woo. That is so important as to what God is fixing to do here. And bring forth a son, not a child, and shall call his name Jesus or Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So who is responsible for Mary having a situation where she's now going to be with child? The Holy Spirit himself. The word of God performed. And I love what Mary says. She said, be it unto me according to your word. Those are some of the greatest words heaven has ever heard. In relation to God having to find somebody to do his will on the earth. The reality is she wasn't married and she had an issue there with being betrothed. But she wasn't married to Joseph. They had not been together. How shall this be? And God makes a promise. This child is going to be directly from heaven by the Holy Spirit. So who is the father of the child? God the Father is the father of this child. Now there are those that tell you that, that God... That, I'm going to tell you right now, God is the father of this child by the person of the Holy Spirit. Mary was a virgin and she had Jesus Christ in a virgin birth. Now there are many that will dispute that, but I got word for it and that is the truth. So God makes a promise. You're going to have a son. The child will be a son. So here we have to go back to this is the promise of God, but what instituted this action of God in the earth. We have to go back to Genesis chapter 3 to find out what instituted this whole thing. In Genesis 3.15, we see that mankind has fallen. God's word has been violated. Relationship has been broken with God. God has spoken that, Adam, when I created you, God did this thing, and it was miraculous. In Genesis 1.26, God, the scripture says that God created man. He man in spirit. God created him. Let us make man in our image. And in Genesis 1.26, God created the spirit man. Read it in the Hebrew. In Genesis 1.26, that's the creation of the spirit man. In Genesis 2.7, the Bible said God reached down and he formed. He formed Adam out of the dust of the ground. He formed Adam's body. So in Genesis 1, he creates the spirit man. In Genesis 2, he creates the physical man. He puts the spirit man into the physical man blows the breath of God and the Bible says that Adam became a living soul body soul and spirit in the image of God Amen. God is triune you are triune in your makeup yes. and God blew the nephesh the spirit of God and now Adam was born and full of the Holy Spirit of God yes. walking in perfect relationship with God can you imagine that a perfect relationship the relationship was so perfect that God would show up every afternoon and have a conversation with Adam and Eve. That's a great relationship when God just shows up and wants to have a talk with you every afternoon. But what God specifically did and instituted in that situation, and this is specific, you need to understand this. God said, if a spirit is going to be on earth, it has to be in a body. If a spirit is on earth, it has to be in a body. 
That's why when you mess around with the occult and you mess around with demonic things and Ouija boards and all that stuff of the enemy, I'm telling you, you open yourself because a spirit is just looking for a body to accommodate and let him in so that he can begin to operate in the earth. But do you realize in this sense when God made this promise to come, God had a bit of a problem. He had to come in a body also because that was the law he had established. Do you know God won't break his own laws? God won't break. The one thing I love about God is he will not break his own laws. His word is true and yea and evermore. So the reality is God told Adam and Eve, he said, I want you to dwell there. I want you to have dominion. I want you to plant a garden in the garden. He said, I want you to take care of it. I want you to, to just ensure that it's taken care of. I want you to shamar it. I want peace and you brings peace and safety to it. I want you to put a hedge around it. He said, I want you to work. And then God says something, something. He said, I'm giving all these things that you can do. But he said, there's one thing you cannot do. You cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They could eat anything else in the garden. God said, there's only one thing you can't do. I don't know about you, but God, once you give me a chance to do that, I wouldn't have blown it. How about you? And all God says is, just you can eat anything you want. You can have anything. I've given you dominion. I've given you the ability to take this and live and enjoy. And God said, there's just only one thing I require that you cannot do. He says, you can do everything else. I used to say when I get to heaven, I was going to slap Adam. But I realized when I get there, I'd have to slap myself because I would have created the same problem in the garden. And so would you. So the reality is we have a perfect relationship, Adam and Eve in the garden, God's visitation. But then somebody illegal comes into the garden. And the Bible says, and the Bible calls it specifically a serpent. Now you've got to understand that we know this is Lucifer, but the Bible says he's a serpent. And so because he is a spirit, a fallen angel, he has to steal a body or con a serpent out of his body to come up and begin to speak to Eve. Lucifer did not speak to Eve. He usurped a serpent and came and spoke to Eve as a serpent. I'm reading Bible to you, folks. I'm reading Bible to you. And what's amazing to me, he beguiles Eve. She took the fruit and did eat, and she gave unto Adam, and oh... He ate also. And now we have a rupture in the very fabric of heaven and earth. Literally, the relationship is torn away instantly. The relationship and the wondrous condition of love and peace and grace is disrupted by man. God's word has been violated. For God said, if you eat of that tree, you might die. He said, no, you surely will die. Now understand that when God speaks something, if God speaks it to you, he's also speaking it to himself. If God says something, this is why, this is why God cannot lie. If God says something, it will happen. If God speaks it, it will happen. So when God speaks, he's not just speaking to you, Mark. He's speaking to himself. So God promised this. Adam and Eve, if you do this, you will surely die. The problem is now God has to honor his word. I praise God that he honored his word because if he can break his word here, he can break, it word in, he can break his word in John 3, 16. Yeah, that's right. And God cannot do that. So God now honors his word. He said, you have disobeyed me. And now there's physical and spiritual death that has brought in, been brought into the human condition. And for God to remain God, he has to keep his word. For God to me, because the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. So God has spoken it. But what I love about in the, pro, in the process of the fall, God shows up. And he instantly comes and he has a conversation with a serpent. He has a conversation with Adam. He has a conversation with Eve. When he goes to Adam, he said, Adam, what did you do? And what does Adam say? Is that woman you gave me? <laughs> God goes to Eve and says, Eve, what did you do? And Eve said, it wasn't me, it was the devil. And ever since that time, the blame game of humanity has begun. And it continues to this day. It's not my fault. They were victims of circumstance. And God speaks to the serpent and he makes a promise. And God begins to address, in a prophetic manner, God begins to prophesy to the future coming of a Messiah. And God makes a promise. And what is the promise? 
Christmas is coming. This is the promise of God in Genesis 3. Christmas is coming, saint of God. God promised this from the very beginning. After the fall, God was not caught off by this off guard. God understood the nature of humanity. God was not caught off guard. But here God prophesies, Christmas is coming to humanity. Ooh. He makes this promise. This is one of the greatest promises in Scripture. The reality is God knew he could not come right now. He didn't have a body. For God to come and do the work, the efficacious work of the cross and Calvary and the shedding of blood, he needed a body. A spirit cannot come and do that. That's why God put Adam and Eve here, gave him in a body. He said, I want you to go to work. He said, you got to get a shovel. He said, you're going to have to go to work and put your hands to something. Spirits cannot do that. So even God, when he came, he had to come and take on a body to perform the work of redemption. I can't come right now, but th that woman that you deceived, that woman, that woman you messed with, whoo, I'm going to use woman to provide me a physical body. The very woman you came against, the very woman you deceived, God said, do you know the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord? Yes. And so God said, I'll tell you what, serpent, you came and you deceived this woman. He said, guess what? I've got a woman down the line in generations, and I'm going to use her to mess you up. I'm going to use her to mess your kingdom up. I'm going to use the woman you deceived to destroy your kingdom. And I will come into her physically. And I will be the seed of the woman. I'll be the seed of heaven. I will dwell in her, I will be birthed out of her, and I will use her body to give me a body, which now makes me legal on earth to take the war on with the devil. Yes. God had to get a body to become legal on earth to bring redemption to mankind. Everything God does is legal. God does not do anything illegal ever. God said, I'm going to come and take back the power and authority you stole from him. And he said, I'm going to come back and take it legally. I'm going to come in a body and get it back. And I'm going to use that legal status of man to crush your head legally. And take back that power you stole from them and give it back to them legally. Right. And give them the authority you stole from them legally. I'm going to give it back to them. But I can't intervene in earth without a body. God will not break his word. God's holiness caused Christmas. Amen. God's holiness yes. caused Christmas. God's integrity made it necessary for a virgin to have a child. He needed a body but could not be born of a man. He could not be born of a man. He needed a body, but could not be conceived in sin or the Adamic nature. He could not be from the bloodline of a man. So God needed a miracle himself. God needed a miracle himself. And the miracle he found was a little girl in Nazareth named Mary. And God said... Oh, I've seen this girl. I've watched this girl. I see her heart. I see her spirit. And she's the one in the fullness of time God sent his son. And God, she is ready. She wants, she is somebody I have chosen. And she has chosen me. And the miracle God needed was for Mary to say, be it unto me according to your word. The miracle God needs in your life is for you to say to God, be it unto me according to your word. God has promises and plans, but he needs you to get in agreement with them. The day you say to God, be unto me according to your word, guess what? All heaven's going to break loose. God needed somebody to accept, accept this unbelievable mission. And God found her. And he found a man named Joseph. And they believed it. And they took it. And they said, this is going to be what God promised in Genesis chapter 3. Whoa, what a wonderful, wonderful Christmas story we have. He said, I told you. I'm going to promise you. That woman you beguiled, that woman's going to fix you. She's going to mess you up. That's what he told her. I'm, I'm okay, I'm ad living here a little bit, but that's what, exactly what he said. In fact, he said, out of the seed of that woman, that son, that child is going to crush your head. He's going to destroy your kingdom. You messed with the wrong woman. God said, I promise this. It's going to happen. In fact, I love what the, I love the word God used. He said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and he shall bruise thy heel. God said, what's going to come out of woman, what's going to come out of woman is going to be the ushering in of the kingdom of God in the earth. My God, women, do you know how special you are to God? 
Yeah, I haven't even got to the good part yet. <laughs> what a promise. This is Christmas. Satan, this woman is going to be your nightmare. Enmity means irreconcilable hostility. Any of you husbands ever made your wife mad and it took a couple weeks to get back in good graces? <laughs> there ain't no woman ever been in good graces with the devil ever since this happened. And what the enemy did not understand is the hidden wisdom where God, when he created woman. Do you know that God designed women? And the way he designed women in childbirth is special and it's holy and it's unique and the devil never. Do you know in 1 Corinthians it talks about the hidden wisdom of our God. Yes. Do anybody, you understand your God's a genius? Yes. My God is a genius. And when you understand that, every time we have a beautiful sunset here in Linden, I send a picture to my, my brothers and sister. And I always tell them the genius of our God. Yes. That every night he can just poof, throw out a canvas or a mural there that is so beautiful and so amazing. And is he just doing that in his spare time? When I grew up in the church, one of our favorite songs was The Power in the Blood. There is power, power, wonder working power. In the blood, in the blood. There's power, power, wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lord. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Anybody remember that song of growing up in the church and, and singing that hymn? And, and we had many hymns that were about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I knew the blood of God was holy. I knew the blood of Jesus was efficacious. I knew it was powerful. But I always had a question in my mind. Okay, he was born of a virgin, but something I never understood. And this is the miracle of God, and this is what Satan did not understand. How does the baby not have the mother, blood of the mother. I'm glad you ask. I'm glad you ask because I'm going to tell you today. Because I have wondered this all my Christian life. And I got a revelation here a couple weeks ago about how this worked. Because we know that I read it to you two different places in Isaiah and in Luke. That she shall bear a what? A son. A son comes from the Y chromosome of the father only. If you women, if you've had a boy, he came from the Y chromosome of the father. Absolutely true. If it's an X chromosome, it'll be a girl. But if it's a Y chromosome, and the Y chromosome only comes from the Father. So I know the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ was the Holy Spirit and God Almighty. I know who His Father was. So I know from the Y chromosome standpoint, Jesus' blood is holy. It's the blood of heaven. But for years I struggled with the issue, Lord, I don't understand... Because I didn't understand physiology and I did not understand biology. Because when I went to biology in high school and physiology, I wasn't listening. Because that was right before football practice or right before basketball practice. So I really wasn't too interested in biology or physiology. So I apparently missed this class. But I'm going to go explain to you the nature of what God did in planning for redemption in creation. Planning for, oh, I love God. He's a master planner. God designed a woman to have a child in a way that the blood of the child never mixes with the mother's blood. I did not know that. That's an amen right there. The blood of the mother doesn't mix with the child. The blood of Mary did not mix with the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Mary, as wonderful as she is, wonderful as she is, it did not mix with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is science. This is part of the enmity that God was talking about that Satan did not understand. The blood of the mother will not mix with the blood of the baby. The baby's blood is different from the mother's blood. They never mix. One of the placenta's job. Remember I read you about that womb, what shall be developed? God said, and that child will be born of your womb. God had this all planned. He had all this ready to go. He planned this in creation. One of the placenta's job is to make sure blood from the mother and fetus never mix. I didn't know that. The placenta acts as an exchange surface between the mother and the fetus. The placenta only rests on the womb. Nutrients and oxygen are passed over by diffusion only. If the mother's and the fetus's blood mixed, it could be deadly to both of them. I never knew that. And I, my question was, God, how, how, if this blood is holy, and I need you to understand, God needed sinless, holy blood. He needed blood that was perfect and pure. Yes. 
Do you remember when Israel, at the time of Passover, they would go out and would they just grab any lamb to break and offer to God? No, no they, they had to go, what, find a lamb without spot and without blemish. They had to find a lamb that was perfect. Yes. That's right. And my question to God is, God, I don't understand. How did Mary's blood not get in Jesus? You tell me your blood is efficacious and is powerful. And God said, I'm glad you asked. You missed biology because you were thinking about basketball and thinking about football. So I'm going to explain it to you. Lucy, I'm going to explain this to you. That is the job of the placenta, to make sure the mother and the fetus's blood never mix. The placenta acts as an exchange surface, that's all. The placenta only rests on the womb. It only rests on the womb. Nutrients and oxygen are passed over by diffusion only, and the mother and fetus's blood never mix. Blood from the mother passes through the placenta, filtering oxygen, glucose, and other nutrients to your baby via the umbilical cord, which comes from the placenta. Oh, I'm giving you biology, but I'm giving you truth. I'm giving you biology and physiology, but I'm giving you the truth. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was pure and efficacious. It was not the blood of a father, an earthly father, and it was not the blood of a woe earthly woman. It was the blood of God, holy, pure, and sinless. Yeah. Mary's blood never touched Jesus' blood. Oh, that's an amen. amen. Mary's blood never touched his blood. I know she was wonderful. I know she was chosen by God. But I got news for you. There was blood God needed that was powerful and efficacious for a sacrifice that would be powerful for time and all eternity and never be needed to be done again. Woo, hallelujah. I'm a, I wish you'd get excited about this. Amen. So God said, Isaiah, I want you to write this down. A virgin shall conceive. Say that again. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Mary, thou art hardly favored of God. You shall have a son. And what God is explaining to this unemployed cherub is, look, what you don't know, when I was designing woman, I was thinking about myself. I was making preparations just in case something went wrong, just like it has right now. I was making a way for me to come into the world without an earthly father and without contamination from the blood of an earthly mother so that I would be the son of God and the son of man by birth, but the bloodline would be directly from the Y chromosome of God, and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was directly from heaven in the Y chromosome of God himself. Amen. That's what makes a boy. Amen. The Y chromosome. That's right. So when you see me doing this, I'm saying the Y chromosome got me here. God said, I was planning this all along. Amen. My goodness. Just in case something went wrong. Just like this situation here. God said, I'm going to use the matrix of a woman. The womb. I'm going to use that matrix to be my launching pad. Into the world. To legally bring legal redemption to man. My God, your redemption is purely legal. You need to understand that. That's why Satan cannot touch it, steal it, or take it from you. It is purely 100% legal. Right. Hallelujah. He has no charge against it. I remember years ago we were talking about, I, I used to do with some people and they ran a prayer house and they prayed for everybody, every kind of need. I mean, wacko stuff and all that stuff, crazy stuff. And, and I remember Chet telling me one time about the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and dealing with people that had demonic oppression. And, and oh my God, he said, you bring the blood onto the situation. He said, my God, you ought to see demons flee. The blood of Jesus is as powerful today as it ever was because it is pure and sinless and holy blood. See, the seed of God had already been slain in heaven. When was the Lamb of God slain? The Before the foundation of the world. God said, I already planned this in heaven. I just need a body on earth with perfect blood to accomplish it on earth. That's, right. That's, right. That's how far reaching and thinking your God is. Hallelujah. I need a body. The Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. You talk about the his, hidden wisdom and planning of God. The preparation. The lamb has already been slain. He just needs a body down here to perform it. The sinless blood of heaven has to be sacrificed on earth. God said, I didn't want the fall. God never wanted the fall. But just in case, I've already got, I've already got a matrix. 
God said, I know the seed of God. That's, that's from heaven. That's from me. I ain't worried about that. I got the Y chromosome. But he said, I need to find a girl. I need to find a maiden, a handmaiden of Israel. I need to find somebody from the tribe of David. I need to try somebody from the tribe of Judah so that we can create and we can bring the lion of the tribe of Judah to earth. Where's that baby girl? Where is? There she is. Mary, you are hardly favored. Are you ready for this, honey? Are you ready for this girl? Be it unto me according to your word. Hallelujah. Heaven was worshiping. Hell was screaming. And I want to tell you, heaven, heaven was so excited about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know how excited heaven was? That when the angels saw the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, they freaked out and they went and they just bailed off out of heaven. God's like, let them go. There ain't nothing I can do with them. And they come to the shepherds and they say, glory to God in the highest. He couldn't even stop them. That's how excited the angels were over this. God was explaining in this situation, spirit cannot die. I need a body that can die. The wages of sin is death, brothers and sisters. Sin has wages. It has results. But God said the spirit cannot die. I need a physical body. I, I, I need a matrix. Somebody that will let the will and the promise of God be manifest. Do you know that God wants you to be spiritually a matrix for him? Yes. To deliver Jesus Christ to your neighbors, yes. uh -huh. to those around you. God wants to use you to bring the word of God and the Lamb of God to those around you. So God said, I need a body. I've got the Y chromosome. That's done. And I found a handmaiden of the Lord. And he said, this girl going to mess you up, devil. This little girl going to mess you up. She is going to birth your worst nightmare. She's going to birth something you can't kill. She's going to birth something you cannot kill. She's going to birth somebody that's going to raise people from the dead. Heal the sick. Heal the lame. God was right. He said, if you eat of that tree, he said, there's going to be a result. Surely you're going to die. Do you know judgment is a manifestation of God's holiness? Judgment is a manifestation of God's holiness. I'll say it to you. David said, your judgments are pure and righteous all together. Adam and Eve, you're in trouble. In fact, Scripture says, whatever you sow, therefore you shall reap. And that's not because God hates you. It's because God is holy. He, he, he's got to be honest to his word. So if you, evil, if you sow evil, that means God has to make sure you reap evil. If you sow evil, I make sure you, God has to make sure I reap evil. Unless, unless, unless he reaps it for me. Right. Unless he, do you know Jesus Christ is your propitiation? Yes, yes, he, is. Yes, he, is. he said all the fire and hell that was coming against you because of your sin. He said, I'll be your propitiation. I'll be your, I'll be your shield against that. Yes. God said, I'll take your charges. The devil had us in hawk, and God said, I'll tell you what, I've got a plan to buy every one of them out of hawk. I was in a pawn shop, and Jesus come and purchased me and redeemed me. Yes. Got me out. <laughs> God said, I don't want you to die, Stephen. But somebody's got to die here. Or God would be a liar. Right. Amen? Yeah. He would not be true to his word. That would not mean he would not be God. He has to be holy. He has to honor his word. Isaiah 53 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Every sin you've ever committed was put on that baby. Every sin you're thinking about committing was put on that baby. Every sin you might, com might commit later on, not even knowing it accidentally, was put on that baby. That's true. My God, now, now I understand why Satan hates Christmas. My goodness. All this came out of Christmas? Really? You need to thank God for Christmas. Yes. You need to thank God for Christmas. But can I ask what I just read you? Who smote the baby? I just read it to you. God smote the baby. It was God. Let me read it again. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God. Woo. 
And one of the hardest scriptures I've ever learned, and it pleased God to do this. You don't know how much God loves you. We sing, Jesus loves me, this I know so tritely, and we don't even understand what God did. I'm going to explain it to you today. God put all your sin on this baby. And God said, I'll tell you what, I'll die. Somebody's going to have to surely die. And he said, I'll die so Stephen doesn't have to die. Yeah. I'll die for, so Mark doesn't have to die. I'll die so Jack doesn't have to die. For Cindy doesn't have to die. For Jim doesn't have to die. God said, I'll die so Randy doesn't have to die. Woo! No wonder the devil hates Christmas. My God, all this came out of Christmas. Because if Jesus had not become a man, you and I would have had to die. Eternal death and physical death. Oh, I praise God for Christmas. The reality is when Adam and Eve died, it brought in two deaths. Physical death and spiritual death. And God said, if I'm going to substitute for them, I've I got to get in a body to be legal on earth. So on the cross, Scripture says that the transgressions and iniquities of all, all 14 billion people that have ever lived was put on that baby. All put on the Son of God. And God said, I will die the manner of death they deserve. Do you know the only way God could forsake himself was for sin to be present? And Scripture tells us that he who knew no sin became sin. So on the cross, Scripture says that the transgressions and iniquities of us all, all was put on Christ. He who knew no sin. And he was taken from among the land of the living. What was Jesus', Jesus greatest cry on the cross? My God... My God, why hast thou forsaken me. forsaking me? My goodness. My God, my God. This is the moment God forsook himself. This is the moment God forsook himself yes. for you. This is the moment God forsook himself for you. For me. My God, my God. Oh, Jesus loves me this. Side. We don't know how much God loves us. I believe that God loves us so much, and, and, and I don't know if we'll ever understand these two things aside of glory. We will never understand what it felt for God to be apart from himself. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God had never been apart from himself. Jesus is God in the flesh. Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. Jesus is God. But now God had to forsake himself. Because of your sin and my sin. This is Genesis 3 taking place in the Godhead. No wonder the devil hates Christmas. My God, it messed him up. We will never understand. I don't believe we'll understand until we get to heaven. That God forsook himself and he had never had to be removed from himself or be apart from himself. I believe the second thing that we will never understand, and th this one you need to get in the spirit. He knew he could never be the same way he was before. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Right? I know I'm going deep here, but th this is why Satan hates Christmas. This is why has, I'm going to tell you, Satan fights Christmas more than any other thing. He doesn't fight the resurrection. He doesn't fight Easter. He doesn't fight resurrection. But right now, the all-on call of the enemy is to get away with Christmas and do away with Christmas and the virgin birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because that described the doom of Satan. Yes, that's right. He knew he would always have to be in flesh forever. He was the Word. He was with God, was God. And now because of sin, he's stuck in flesh. He spent all of eternity as the Word. The Word of God, right? Yes. The Word of God, right? That's right? Oh, but I praise God he's stuck in flesh. I praise God he's stuck in flesh. Oh, I praise God he's stuck in flesh. I'm sorry, the Lord. I'm sorry my sin caused this. But I praise God he's stuck in flesh today. You need to praise God. Because now we have a high priest that ever liveth to make intercession for those. And then can be touched with the feelings of the infirmities. So when you go to God crying and praying and going in pain, God said, I know what you feel like, Stephen. I've been there. I'm still flesh. Woo, hallelujah. No wonder the devil hates Christmas. 
God said, I will step into flesh and be your high priest forever. My God! Ooh. I could preach there for a year. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Jesus is God in the flesh. And your sin and my sin put him there. And he can't go back. And I praise God for that. I got scripture for this, so don't think I'm out on a limb here. I've never come without scripture. I can read. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. Not a spirit. The man, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Son of God and Son of Man. The man Christ. And now that he's stuck in that body, and he's ascended to the right hand of God the Father, Scripture tells me he's ever living to make intercession for Stephen. No wonder the devil hates Christmas. Christmas messed him up. God found a matrix, a launching pad, to come into the world. A little girl in Nazareth say, whatever, whatever your will is, God, I'll do it. My God, thank you for Christmas. Don't ever take your salvation lightly. You have no idea what it costs God. Right. Our sin caused God to be separated from himself. That was something he had never experienced. Caused God to have to live in a body now in flesh. Do you know when you get to heaven, just like Thomas, Jesus will say, put your hand in my side. Yes. Do you know that? Yes. He'll say, go ahead, put your fingers in the nail prints in my hands. Yes. Woo, hallelujah. I'm not making this up, folks. This is in your Bible. He's in glorified flesh. I understand that. Amen. Glorified, magnified. I understand that. But I needed a God who could be touched by everything I've gone through. I needed a God that knows what it's like to be lonely. To be rejected. To be sick. To be hurting. To be angry. To be frustrated. Now I have a high priest who has experienced all that. And now. He can be a priest that understands the feelings of our infirmities. We need to understand how serious this is what God has done for us. See, John, the writer, I think that John got Jesus better than any other, other disciples. Paul got a revelation, but th th I believe that there's a reason John wrote the book of Revelations, not Paul. Because John, the writer, says this, In the beginning was the Word. I'm like, God, how did God reveal this to John? And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. And God unwrapped Himself out of that glory. And He stepped down into humanity through 40 and two generations. Wrapped Himself in flesh through the womb of Mary. And came out as the Savior of the world. I'm glad Jesus did that for you because I wouldn't have. <laughs> and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And John understood that to the degree. That's where he later writes in chapter 3. For God so loved. God didn't just love you. He so loved you. <laughs> God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in this man, Jesus Christ shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Man, now I know why Satan hates Christmas. Yes. My goodness. Don't tell me you don't understand this concept. I bet you there's not a parent in here that has not given up something for their children. I bet you there's not a parent in here who has not given up something for your children, that you can't go back and change what you did. And you did it because you loved them more than you loved yourself. God this did this because he loves you more than he loved himself. My God. He loved you more than he loved himself. Woo! No wonder Satan hates Christmas. The virgin birth is what makes Christianity different than every other religion. And this is why the world fights it and hates it. It is the most miraculous event ever. The resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ 
Yes, one of the most powerful events ever. But others have been raised from the dead. The Bible said many there at the resurrection of Christ. And yes, they did die again. But there's only one virgin birth in history. There's only one virgin birth in history. Your Savior came incarnate. The incarnation of the living God. And he came with the Y chromosome to be a son. A son is given. Not a child. God said, I'm going to call what it is. I'm going to prophesy the truth. Devil, this woman will mess you up. And I've designed it so her blood and the baby's blood never mixes. So this baby's going to have my blood, my bloodline, no blood from Mary to contaminate it, and it's going to be pure and sinly, sinless and holy. And God said, the day is shed on Calvary. He said, my God, all of hell is going to shake and quake. Hallelujah. So today I want to tell you Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. This is why the devil wants to take Christ out of Christmas. The world is determined to take Jesus Christ out of Christmas. And I'm determined to tell them, no way are we going to let you take Jesus Christ out of Christmas. This is what he did. This is what God has done for us. The matrix of Mary, God's secret weapon. Woo! Mary, you are highly favored. Stand for the blessing, if you will. So when God speaks these words, you know, he really meant it. He really means this. He said, I'll die to establish this. The Lord bless you and keep you. Merry Christmas. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Merry Christmas. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Merry Christmas. God said, if you'll put my name, Yahweh, on your children, I will seek them. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. For God is after your seed. And it's a promise of heaven. If you receive that, say amen. amen. You can be seated. Hello, one and all. We have been receiving questions regarding where to send tithes and offerings. If you'd like to mail it in, you can do so at P.O. Box 2223, Sholo, Arizona, 85902. And please, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, like us on Facebook. Link is in the description. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Link is also in the description. Helps out us, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that this is a format you wish to see continue. And with that, we wish you a blessed week.